So what does this all mean? <clears throat> Sounds like conjecture gibberish to a lot of people. And some of you, you know, that are aware of this, scrying, scrying over on the internet and the information that you can get is taken on many forms. There's a whole list of different sort of magic spells that you can do with scrying. But I, when I looked it up years ago, and more from an occult sense, scrying was actually writing, and there may be other terms for this. I'll post them up on my community posts on this channel when and if, you know, spotted or found. But it gets into something that um, Nathaniel Gillis was talking about, and I've heard different times where there was this case that he had, and I think that I'm not saying I know this for sure, but that there were other cases like this where a quote-unquote demon had written or scried um, symbols from the inside of a person's skin to the outside. So, in other words, it was thinking in reverse um, as to who would be looking upon it and viewing it. So, you know, the curiosities abound um, because this is a theme that I've heard in different occulted uh, practices, places of writing curses or writing symbols um, on people, on their foreheads, um, you know like imprinting a soul or scarring a soul and it takes us toward this cursive this alphabet that we're stuck with that really doesn't have a lot to do with or does it the 24 Greek uh, letters which I've circled some of these and how they correlate cross correlate back to the letters that we use today. But when we take something like the simple A, and by the way, the reason these are all numbered on the bottom is when you reverse this from 26, it adds back up to 27. So in other words, I put a one there for the A. If I'm counting backwards, A is the 26th. For Z, it's the 26th. And I reverse it, it's the first. And when we run these lines parallel, it always adds up to 27, which is another, you know, factor of nine. Um, but it is very unique also at 27. And it gets a little bit more into what I feel, how I've decoded it, and, I'm, and my own personal view is when we look at this Metatron's cube, which you could very easily make the Star of David out of that, and um, how there is this quantifier, there is this I, there is this, this balance um, with, it's almost like, you know, the earth is in procession, we're supposedly spinning 950 miles per hour. When you write something down, you know, and the, the procession of the solar system, the cosmic pr procession, when you write something down, are you in the same place? There's like this absolute theory of relativism, but what we're, you know, having to contend with is whether gravity is something that's considered a constant, say, in the spiritual realm. And how real or tangible this world really might be. So I use this Metatron's cube um, balance as a balance where I place these letters over this. And obviously those with a backbone, those with a bridge, you know, um, like the eye, <laughs> the shapes they're going to make when you um, 
begin this rotation, like here's an A and here's an A in reverse. Here's a B reversed. Here's a C reversed. I have another line where I, you know, where I get into this a little bit more. Here's, you know, the F reversed. And what these tend to stand for in more engineering type terms. And the S is very strange, right? Because that serpentine, that, that symbol, that sort of um, tricky, tricky, um, like taking energy and then serpentining it back around, you know, to, the, to me, the S is a very strange um, character, you know? And uh, so we've got the A, but you've also got this the A in rotation. It begins to kind of look like roads, a sun, trees. You know, there's there's more of a fractal quality. B as well. And you almost say flower, but then you start to look back at um, this and how there's there's a mimicking going on there. And then we get into the base um, definitions, especially from, you know, a Greek um, letter standpoint that I've circled here where you have, you know, alpha, but you also have adenine, you know, um, afterbirth, amplage, amperage, all, um, beta, born birth bondage the reason that i write these down is because there's a heavy theme with these letters obviously going back to and you know this is just something that i wanted to jot down didn't get much sleep last night i've done this before in the past but i wanted to give some sort of rationale or reason um, that you could start to postulate of why looking at this for two hours for those of you who have watched it, it, might make any damn sense, and especially how I came up with this symbol right here, that turned into this symbol, and that there has to be a center crux. There has to be a place of origin. There has to be a center, you know? And that is, you know, that gets back into these sort of Masonic um, concepts, ideas, traditions, that we are heavily manipulated with, you know, and um, one of those that you'll see at these Masonic lodges would be this star mass or stellar mass type um, symbol, you know, like, is this a cone? Is this, am I looking down or am I looking in? Is this, is this a tube? Is this a hallway? Is this something that we travel? You know? And if we were to make this in rotation also, because we're moving. And that's that part of that three-dimensional into four-dimensional space that we're both being tested on, but they also covertly are laughing at us for not knowing. The sheeple, right? Riding the goat, what that really means. <laughs> you know? We start to see a clock, a structure, um, characters, right? And from a spiritual sense, when you see something for in the truth of what it is, for instance, pi, I'm not gonna go off there and start playing, you know, with the numbers or phi, 1.618, 3.14, four, da, 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 you know? Um, when you start to play with the maths, you know, you're, you're coming back up with, this is six spheres coming from a center. At first, you know, you would see seven, right? So that, that takes us back to um, possibly a quantifying nature of why, why this, why 27, 
two, seven. So you have two perspectives, two ways. You have A, B, C, D. D for Druid, the fourth letter. Also, the 23rd, if you're counting down. And you have your witches, the 23rd letter, the fourth, if you're counting back. And then you start to see the energy with that particular symbol, with that um, W, it starts to look more like an energy current or a line. The U looks like a link in a chain, you know? The V is, is this sort of binding energy. <clears throat> the X, even though I made the X, you know, in a processional real-time space, some of these letters, like even like the Z, you know, with time, <clears throat> the Y, freestanding, almost having the image of man, right? Vitruvian man. The G being this interlocking H for Havala. The I for me, you know, ego, the box. The J for, you know, Jehovah, the anchor, right? K, some subjectively would say Cain starts with the C. Personally, I think Cain starts with K. But something that I'd done years ago as I was looking at um, the chromosomes, you know, and I was looking specifically at human chromosomes. I was looking at the, the, the post postulized shape at that time. This is some years back, so science has been able to dig in and look at protein structures and things like this. And we don't realize the influence that the protein structures have on us more so, you know, Matsumoto, the, the thoughts um, and their impact on the water content, you know, um, anywhere rationally around 70% water, you know, that comprises many things, carbon, nitrogen, you know, phosphorus, sulfur, and um, oxygen. To be looking at these as not, not through relativism, relativism, but through the scope of what something is universally, um, a, a symbol, a sign that air would always uh, convey whether you're on this side or that side, a, a confusion. And a big part of the split here with this um, alphabet that we have, these 26 letters, is starts to come here with the 13th, right? The 13th, the M, the M, mother, maternity, mort, mortgage, you know? Mu, the Greek, the masons, the maze, made, micro, back to Mu, when we're looking at engineering terms. Lambda for the L. But when you get into this territory and you come to the 13th, there's a space or a span here between the N and the O, where you have this O for the Omega, Omicron. Um, the mothering structure, the quantification, the beginning, sort of like the beginning and the end. N being more new, nullify, new in the NU in the Greek. Um, and how groups of letters seem to interplay with a sort of energy themselves, you know? When we're looking at M, we're looking at the possibilities of these sort of energy structures and what 
they would mean if you were to see this written down it would be confusing until you start to dissect and break down what that means you know and so if we were to assume that this symbol the O is really conveying it's the 15th and what we also find at the 15th in Greek um, letters let's see if we can find it is this Omega or Omron and it's the 15th star. So the Omicron and the Omega refers to the 15th star. So when we start to place letters on this as if it is a quantifier and we begin to look at what these, like this is the pure source. This is the energy that everything comes from. This is sacrifice. <clears throat> this is, and, and so we're moving, right? And these rays of light are coming out, but because of the celestial position, at the moment, at the time, when this energy, this light is traveling, this electromagnetic disturbance, if you will, there, is, there becomes a direction. And then that direction quantifies a unit in time as we talked about in prior videos. And then there's this instant, just like with these letters, there's these, these instant validators that occur where even in that unit of time, before time, <clears throat> before a unit, it was both traveling outward toward a projected um, end in itself, finding <clears throat> and echoing back. And it was also just like our pain receptors going in the other direction. And just minutely, it reached one place before it reached the other. It was trying to find its balance. It was rotating about itself. It already knew the shape and had a sense of self and a familiarity with the potential of what it is as a unit. <clears throat> it had to be something. It had to have an identity. And through that identity, it had to have direction, directive and direction. And with these turns, you know, you could, you could do this too, where you have each sphere could be symbolized with just that, right? Just that. Almost like a stop sign, right? That's a whole nother story, right? But I think a stop sign's got the eight sides. Right? So, what happens is, when we turn that, a turn, when we turn that, a turn, when we turn that, a turn, and it's like, where does the energy through adjacency and form, form follows function, function into form, where does it return to? And where does it travel back to? What are the quantifiers? So that's why that symbol means so much to me. Um, it's something that was both brought to me 
taught to me and something that I searched for and all of these various values and there is a procession or a rotation that occurs to the right the right and that's why it's so important to keep us functioning and thinking in a way where we see ourselves as the observer we're not not we don't see ourselves like um, cultures and peoples of the past from from birth and traveling through throughout their lifetimes as a part of an integral part of the tribe or um, a specific persona or personality that completes a familiar or, or a family unit. We see ourselves as soul individuals and yet we don't have any sort of integer quantification of completion. In other words, there are no principles. And so... I found it paramount to get back to looking for a principle structure. And the only thing that I could find that has that sort of quantification where numbers just don't see to, seem to lead on endlessly in, you know, in Babel in, um, is when we look at the, the Phi formulation. Then it gives continuity to not only the number, but the symbol, the energy, the energy directives, and how these energies are being used against us in those symbols, like, you know, you have the Masonic symbol, but what is that also? You know, it's it's a target. It's target shopping center. <laughs> you have all of these logos encapsulated in this spherical or circular, whether it, you know, these, these symbols break out, whether they, um, you know, and, and so many symbols are based on that specific symbol structure that I was talking about prior, which is, you know, Metatron's cube, you know, and then Metatron's cube goes through this resonance, just like the A, right? So all of this hails back to a central theme, which is the monad and how the monad is being manipulated as a central construct to the purifying and pure theme that principle living, principle thinking, a structured principle way of doing things um, comes to be. But when we use this as the center point to where we are making these symbols, right? You have the A centered around this area. But when you get into symbols like the K where there is a backbone to it, you start to see that it's communicating a speci very specific communication. You know, it's anchoring off of, you have sacrifice. You have expression. It's how these values counter off of one another. But also how I learned this was I started to see a pattern of what, what is missing in relationships, what's missing at school, what's missing in family, what's missing as a structural component to where I can't respect what this person is saying. And as a central theme, this sacrifice, sacrificing other people, expression, muting expression, you're, at least I was taught principle by all the anti-principle that was done to me. And so you start to look at why was it so important? Why was it such an agenda to treat me such a way to use, you know, Stockholm syndrome, shaming, um, you know, sparking up that adrenaline getting children experiencing these these hard bouts of adrenochrome, you know, where you're going on to this whole other level and marking time as an event, as an assault 
you know, um, on the individual that impacts the rest of that person's life. So you have sacrifice, expression, wisdom. There's a physical wisdom, right? So you'll see that the process, by their fruits you shall know them. How does this apply to everyday life? So you will see a process that people under a demonic influence, we will just say without you know, trying to be too um, obtruse and really generic by using that term, but what other term are we going to use? You will see them go through this process where they will sacrifice your purity. They'll look at you, they'll giggle, right? And the first thing that you're supposed to do to engage in a relationship with this person, and it might be a dirty joke, right? It might be something foul. It might be talking gossip, you know, being gad about. Um, but it is a process of proving that you are against the purification and the pure truth as an order. So that's when we get into order, orders, you know, and this is, this is a dark triage. This is a dark order, you know, so you've got wisdom, physical wisdom. So what happens is you are sacrificing your purity. You're sacrificing the center of yourself. You're muting your expression. You're not saying anything. When that person's talking mess and you're, you're at work and you're going back to your station and going about your work, in your mind, in your soul, in your heart, you're hanging on to a little secret about that person. And that might breed from jealousy, envy, um, hatred, you know? And then what that manifests is a physical wisdom. It trumps the wisdom that we have that's innate to all of us that is available in the field that is information that can come to us when needed <clears throat> it makes us happy to go about our day it gives us vitality so then we have to start tapping into a different energy in order to come over here in community right in community and we we, we become more isolated and we become more of a, a, a more of a community of one and that's what we're stuck with. And unfortunately, to fix this, I don't believe that going into the existential is the remedy. It's fixing this within yourself, getting back the purification, making sacrifices. You, you could say it for other people. I mean, either you are sacrificing other people or you're sacrificing yourself. And that gets into the sub-principles that I put up on EPL, which is when there's a sacrifice on both ends, you start to see production. So there's this production or a product that manifests from these specific four sacrifice, expression, wisdom, community. And then you start to get into the backbone and what makes this the backbone production and ego, you know, and again, the reason that that inverted pentagram has the power that it does is you are giving your ego up to an unseen force, right? To an unseen force. I mean, what this really is, is it's an altar. It's an altar. And that 15th star might have to something very heavily to do correlate back to and to do with that the omega the omicron the 15th star right the o the 15 and the 12 right the 27 so i can get into this and talk about it a little more in the future and i just came up with this as um something that i had looked into, delved into years ago, concepts I, I that I play with. Um, just, you know, this probably took me 15 minutes to just kind of lay, lay out. Obviously, I could come up with more of these values and how they pertain to birth, how they pertain to death, how they pertain to bondage, 
you know, how they, they pertain to the things that were put, put through, um, even, even with our own bodies and how we regard our own bodies, um, to where most people can't just lie naked and pure by themselves. And the startling thing is that people are starting to wake up to the fact that they are never alone. They're always under observation, especially when they think that they are alone. And that, um, that, that points to um, these people that Nathaniel Gillis looks at in the afterlife or that, that place, you know, in between that these are people, disembodied people, that these are displaced people that we're talking about and dealing with, you know, 